Right, good evening everybody. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening um, and the subject tonight is the photograph in the Fire and Rescue Service uh, by David Holt, um, our honorary uh, archivist, and he's going to go through his chosen subject. And if you can remain muted for the time being, and then when we finish, um, if you'd like to unmute, um, if you've got any questions, um, points you'd like to raise. Uh, with that ado, I'll hand you over to David. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Colin. Well, very nice to see so many of you out on such a, an inauspicious evening. Thank you for coming. I'm gonna talk about, I've uh, been asked to talk about my photographic uh, collection on the uh, fire service. And uh, let me introduce, the talk will be about how it all started. It's been going on for quite a while. The collection, collection's grown up. And in fact, when I came to put this together, I know I promised a lot on the flyer, but really for this talk, what I've done is I brought together photographs of appliances and incidents through the period late 50s to the early 80s. It forms really quite a coherent talk. And I thought that it illustrated the diversity and very wide range of appliances that one could come across when you were traveling around the country during late 50s to early 80s. And I can promise you that there won't be a Battenberg Scania in any of the pictures. At the end, just a couple of company issues, one relating to the Owen Rowland collection of photographs of mostly the London Fire Brigade, and a little bit I want to talk about photographic records of company members. So how did it all start? Where did it all start? It all started with this factory in Erith. This is Fraser and Chalmers Engineering Works. My father worked here as a contract engineer in the 50s. This postcard view is taken in the 20s, but in fact, it looked almost identical to that in the 50s. In the office in which he worked, the manager was the chief fire officer for the industrial fire brigade for Fraser and Chalmers. Don't get your hopes up. It was three trailer pumps, that's all and they were hand pulled, so uh, not much in the way of apparatus. But I did get uh, invitations as a child to uh, industrial fire brigade, pump competitions uh, and the like. Uh, you may remember those of you in the company uh, that we at one point seemed to have hundreds of silver cups which were presented for pump drills. So running out a hose, hitting a target, making up, fastest one gets the cup. Uh, and so uh, some of those cups would have been presented at the sort of thing that I went to here in the late 50s. The main spur, though, for this interest came from a book that I was given by the chief officer, which was first edition copy of uh, Blackstone's History of the British Fire Service. If you haven't read it, strongly recommend. It's available in facsimile. It's a really good read, beautifully written. And the other thing that he gave me was this uh, publication from 1954, which looks at the London Fire Brigade, brief history, current appliances, nice center map of all the stations at the time. And since I was going up to London a lot during childhood and adolescence, gave me quite a few things to look at whilst I was up there. The Fire Brigade, London Fire Brigade book is actually very hard to uh, get hold of. So what was the interest? Well, in, in, with the fire service, there's a lot of interest generated by history and in particular social history, lots of changes throughout the era. Vehicle development and design, which I was interested in. Developments in firefighting techniques I became interested in and was very useful. Uh, I was a safety officer in my laboratory later. And there was of course an expansion of service activities within the fire and rescue services. Uh, and I over the last few years in particular, taken a big interest in looking at uh, medical issues related to the fire service, which is part of our charitable work as well. And there are uh, a number of personalities associated with fire and rescue service, uh, and dare I say it, some of them are online tonight. It coincided with uh, a big interest in 35 millimeter 
uh, photography, the cameras became available uh, cheaper, although it was really quite expensive to run, especially with color. So a lot of my pictures start out as uh, black and white. Uh, and if you remember those who were around, it wasn't normal to be going around carrying a camera all the time. Today, of course, we can do it with camera phones to varying degrees of success, but it wasn't usual to carry a, a camera about. So uh, I picked up some things because I had a, a pocket camera with me of variable quality. So where did it start? This is, I think, the first picture I took in London, circa 57. Uh, it's a uh, 1954 AEC Merriweather pump, looking uh, a little bit bashed, I think. Uh, it looked better later when it was uh, in John Liddell's book, um, but very common machine that I would come across. And the other common one was the Dennis uh, 101. These are both dual purpose, of course. One was running as a pump, one running as a pump escape. Uh, this was from 1956 and is photographed in the yard at uh, Shooter's Hill Fire Station, uh, no longer with us, as indeed uh, Southwark is no longer with us as well. But I lived in Bexley Heath, which is part of Bexley, and the local fire station was uh, Bexley, and that was part of what was a division in Kent Fire Brigade. So these were my two local fire appliances. Uh, these are taken around about 1958, uh, they came on service about 1952, and they actually came to my house in 1954. Smell of smoke. Uh, and I imagine were even shinier uh, than they are there. Just poking out at the uh, right-hand side of the picture is uh, an a AFS emergency pump uh, of the rarer 2x4 variety, and I foolishly didn't swing the camera around and photograph that one. The other appliance that I came across quite a lot in, in Kent area, uh, in the A division, there were four stations I knew of that had uh, a pair of the Leylands. The rest, during my time of knowing them, uh, had these HCB commas. This was running as a spare uh, for the pump at Bexley around about 1960. It was, of course, a, a water tender. Move then to another A division area, um, Eris. Uh, this station's built uh, at the end of the 50s. This photograph's taken about 60. And I lived with earshot, within earshot uh, of the fire station. Uh, and uh, you'll notice, because uh, we'll come back to it, across the top here it says Kent Fire Brigade. Go inside, and a little bit of nostalgia, there is a duty man uh, in the watch room full time. And uh, in the background, uh, HCB. Uh, comma, water tender ladder, and the furthest appliance is the phone tender. We'll be coming back to that one as well. That taken around about 1960. But I say the, the appliance that I probably saw most of in Kent was based around this sort of uh, chassis. So uh, an, an HCB, comma, water tender ladder. This is a 1953 one photographed by my friend Andrew Barr in 1962. The arrow is pointing to me, that is me walking around the back. Uh, probably this was an open day uh, in Kent. Uh, so that's fairly typical. Kent uh, were early in using uh, the silvered side, the non-painted sides, uh, and also a 45 foot ladder. During my time of knowing A Division and knowing Kent in, in general, I didn't know any wheeled estates in Kent at all. There were some during my lifetime, but not during the period I was photographing or took uh, any interest in. Whereas in London, of course, mostly uh, wheeled escapes during all of this period. So you'll notice that it's got two tone horns, it's got uh, orange, uh, amber uh, flashing lights as the warning lights. Uh, and there's one a little later, uh, 1968 and 1954, comma, HCB at Dover, just to show you the uh, livery. Uh, by that time, the amber warning lights covered over. We've got a tripod on the uh, offside with the blue warning light, but not on the near side. Uh, and it's looking a bit the worse for wear, isn't it? Uh, but uh, it's uh, placed itself very nicely here to give me uh, an iconic shot for Dover fire service. Now, Kent had uh, a lot of these comma-based uh, water tenders, uh, and they tended to use a, a large number or a fair number of 
uh, coach builders either from Kent uh, or uh, surrounding counties. So here's a typical one, Borough Green, uh, a comma Whitson, 1951. Uh, and here, that was from Borough Green, uh, a 1950 comma AJ Marsh from uh, Luce. Uh, and these were photographed in 64 at a woodland fire uh, close to their grounds. Another interesting machine uh, Kent had was this 57 uh, AEC Merriweather TL, which had been uh, at Folkestone. 57 is rather loose because the ladders, in fact, were from uh, a preceding machine uh, around about 1938. Uh, so they were remounted on this essentially bus chassis uh, and uh, eventually ended up at Bromley. This taken again by my friend uh, in uh, about 1963. On the right hand side, it's uh, an exercise, uh, and uh, ironically, it's uh, behind. Uh, Harrison Gibson's furniture department, which about 1968 burnt to the ground. Other station that I was a uh, frequent visitor to because I was a student at a college in, in Dartford during the late 50s, early 60s, was uh, Dartford. Rather nice two bay station here, which I know some of you have been uh, associated with. This was photographed in 75, and you can see as a a Dennis D series in the uh, Bay. Uh, but earlier on, 1962, this very smart looking Comma Hayden Megaris TL, which was manufactured like 61 or 62, it was new in 62 to Dartford, and I know uh, some of you have been involved with. Um, the station is two bay and had two pumps, so this in fact, uh, the TL lived round the back in what had been Dartford Borough Council uh, steamroller uh, garage, uh, a capacious enough uh, place to uh, to put it. But it was a very nice looking elegant uh, TL uh, with quite a bit of chrome on. And back at uh, Dartford again, this is in 1967. This is the K2 water tender ladder. Uh, this had a lot of input from um, Kent Fire Brigade uh, firefighters. Uh, so there were a lot of uh, things built into uh, this that had been suggested by serving firefighters. So uh, this is uh, a 1965 uh, machine uh, and was the first one of the series. Uh, the second uh, picture there shows one of the features that got incorporated, the sloping of the ladder because there were complaints that with the um, horizontal ladder, it was much harder to demount it from uh, the appliance. It's an example on the right hand side of a photograph taken for one purpose and then becoming interesting for a couple of other reasons as well. So in the background, the white building is Burroughs Welcome Pharmaceutical Company, uh, which then went on to be Glaxo Welcome and a major giant uh, in the pharma industry and is now, as I understand it, uh, a, a very big uh, complex of housing. And then just behind that, we have a gas holder, which is full of gas, uh, unlike what we see littered around towns now, which is just the guide of the uh, struts, which allowed the tank to rise up and down uh, when it was filled with gas. Another station, uh, which uh, I, I thought was rather a nice one, is, is Medway. Um, this was opened in 53. The picture was taken probably about 58. There was a big program in Kent, as with most uh, county uh, brigades after uh, the, the takeover in 48, for rebuilding and upgrading of fire stations. This, I thought, was a rather nice one. Beautiful um, wooden doors here, although you couldn't actually ever see through them, so you didn't know what was in. The reason I show this is for this Shan Mason steamer because uh, our upper warden, Graham Maltby, was on duty uh, the night that a local army group uh, came along, lifted it and stole it and took it away. Uh, so it must have been a fairly quiet night that night. Inside, that's what it looked like, and there's a picture in 72 showing a 1971 first strike appliance, which was an experimental one with them, based on a Ford Transit uh, chassis. Um, and didn't last too long, I gather, uh, underpowered. In the background, one of the uh, 
uh, 60s TLs or possibly even uh, slightly earlier if it was on the Bedford uh, chassis. So let's go back into London and look at uh, one of the iconic machines. Uh, this is, of course, DGJ 309, still around, still used for ceremonial work in the LFB. A 1937 Leyland Metz outside Soho Fire Station on the run uh, in Newport Place. Uh, and um, on a Saturday morning when the uh, station was, was cleaned out, so it was an easy shot to get. There were three appliances in the DGJ series, 310 went to um, Whitechapel, uh, 311, which I think I've got, yeah, 311 here, which was a Dennis Morris Magaris. Uh, this is taken uh, much later, 1965 in GLC days, so it now has A24 as a station marker. And uh, this is running as a spare, so it's on the run. I have absolutely no idea who the man is in front of Newport Place sign. If I had noticed him before I clicked the shutter, I'd have moved him on, but I didn't. And so he's uh, there in, in history. Uh, this is the same ladder that day backing into uh, Soho. Uh, and so you can see, just see the front of a Soho fire station. We'll see it again in another shot. So we see DGJ again here uh, in 2001. Uh, this is at a, an event in Croydon, uh, uh, an open event, uh, and it's paired with CB91, which was based at Croydon uh, Borough Council when it, when it ran uh, out of this, this station. So 63 AEC Merriweather. The, the um, registration is off an earlier machine. Uh, CB11 is not a 63 registration. Uh, this is refurbished and also still used for uh, ceremonial work. Here, if you haven't seen it, uh, is an excellent little booklet um, and uh, it's uh, easily available. This comes up quite a lot. So it shows uh, DGJ back at Soho uh, in the 80s. Uh, it uh, shows it with its original station number 72 uh, and also our own uh, Mike Hebbard. Uh, and I assume in the background there, we're seeing the new block, which incorporates Soho uh, Fire Station under construction. Here, of course, you can see the old uh, temporary building from the war. This is in the 80s uh, because the station suffered a direct hit uh, with serious casualties, with deaths. Now, this is another uh, pre-war machine, which uh, I, I uh, am very fond of because I attribute uh, my um, membership of the company uh, to having a photograph of this machine. I, when I came for my interview, I uh, thought I'd better show some bona fides. Uh, and so I came along with my iPad with some photographs on this one included. And on the interview panel was Ron Murray uh, before he became master. And he took one look at this, said, uh, I drove this machine, I know it, I want a copy uh, of the photograph. So I think that's what probably got me in. Uh, it's a 1938 Dennis Magaris. Um, and uh, I understand that quite a few of the Dennis machines had uh, a hose reel at the rear, but uh, I never saw any other machine that had a hose reel at the, the rear. So it's uh, unusual uh, to me. This taken in, as you see, December 1965, a freezing cold day. Carry on with the theme of some of these pre-war uh, TLs still around in the mid to late 60s. Here's uh, BYB321, uh, 1936, <coughs> Don, uh, Dennis Magaris. In the background, also quite interesting, then is one of the emergency pumps. Uh, and this is one of the uh, two befores, uh, one of the, the rarer ones, um, at Euston on the forecourt, on the run. And here is Another one, 1940 series of uh, ladders, Merriweather ladders, GGK 946. There's a whole string of GGKs. We'll see a couple more later. Uh, this taken as late as you see as 1967, turning out of Euston, chasing uh, at the front uh, an F12 uh, pump escape. And I don't know whether this is F12 or a Merriweather. They're very similar at the, the back. Somebody might tell me later. And then 
another one which uh, came over to London Fire Brigade from Croydon uh, Borough Council. So this is a 1936 Leyland Metz. It's in the yard at uh, East Greenwich. Uh, photographed October 65, so we are post uh, GLC formation, and that's why it's gone into uh, the uh, GLC fleet, AVB1. The man at the back over here was originally at Croydon and was one of the operators. Uh, whilst this was at East Greenwich, it, it might have been there many times, but there were a number of times when it was not on the run because there was nobody able to operate it. Uh, that's a colour shot of it so you can get the livery. And interestingly, although it's been around in London by then for about uh, five months or so, it still carries Croydon Fire um, Brigade uh, livery uh, and no station marking for um, uh, London. Another one that came over rather later, just after the war, this is a 49 uh, AEC Merriweather TL X Surrey. So this was based at um, Wimbledon for its life, but then transferred into the fleet uh, in 65. And a couple of shots of it uh, here at Kensington, in addition to uh, the rather nice looking ladder, a uh, couple of posters in the back which are of interest. Uh, there it says uh, it's, it's a, a recruitment for the AFS, which itself was to disappear the following year. And the other one says, train for a man's career. So I think that dates it slightly. So here's the lineup at Lambeth one morning in uh, either 62 or 63. I really can't remember. Uh, I'm didn't note everything down, I'm afraid. But uh, we've got uh, a, a um, 1955, I think it is, um, uh, 101, uh, an F12 uh, from 55, and this one is a 62 Hayden Bagaris TL. I'll come back to that. If you look at some of the warning systems, we've still got bells. We have a bell amplifier on the 101, uh, do have blue beacons. Uh, but nothing else on the uh, um, F12. This ladder, this TL, was one of two of the new enclosed uh, TLs that were ordered in 62. Um, so there had been a transfer of one, lab, uh, one ladder to uh, a cabbed vehicle, but these were the first new TLs to come in. Uh, and uh, there was two, this is 236 CXP, uh, 235 uh, was uh, a Merriweather, so that's 236, and this is 235 turning out of uh, Lambeth sometime in 63. So it was uh, a 1962 uh, Merriweather. If we go back to looking at what else was at um, Lambeth that morning, and I was there in 62, 63, there's this 1959 103 uh, emergency tender. Uh, backing into its bay. Just on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see the doors open on the control unit, which is this one. So it's uh, an ex-Bristol half cab bus, which was converted by Brigade Workshops in 1957. The bus is a 40s bus from Bristol. Um, I can't remember exactly the date. Uh, and alas, I don't have any pictures of this one in use at all. Looking at a couple of other specials, here is one that's well known now because it's in uh, preservation. This is a 1954 Maudsley Merriweather uh, ET on the run at Shoreditch in uh, 1965. I think it looks in rather better condition now. Uh, and here, uh, 1962 uh, Dennis uh, foam tender based at Deptford. There were two of these bought in 62. The other one went to uh, Battersea. And again, that's on the run, same day in October. And just to go back to the two ETs we've seen, so uh, the one from um, Shoreditch and the one from uh, Lambeth at a display shortly after uh, the GLC uh, fire service was uh, formed and they've got their, their new uh, livery and, and station numbers. 
So another special here, the Breakdown Lorry, uh, which uh, is uh, 1956. I didn't know the one before this, but I knew this one, uh, uh, Dennis F23. It's uh, at Soho Fire Station, sometime 62, 63. I haven't quite, I haven't got the date uh, recorded. And it's come from uh, Lambeth. Uh, notice uh, no uh, blue lights uh, and it's on bells there. Uh, and in the background, I think we have an F12. And again, you're seeing the front now of uh, the former Soho fire station. The breakdown lorry was there for a recovery of this uh, 101, which has a couple of interesting points. Number one, it's probably had a prang, uh, but it's got uh, these pillars for the blue beacons that was uh, brought in for a little while. Uh, the ambers have been uh, blanked over and it has a bell ampl amplifier. Uh, on uh, this machine, on, on the breakdown lorry, you see he's able to turn over this from red uh, to showing Toei. Um, I came across this machine again, 1967, well off patch. I think by then it had come from uh, Clapham. Uh, it's here to recover this uh, lorry here. Uh, and uh, although we are in 1967, we're two years into GLC, it's still showing uh, LCC with the old uh, crest. Uh, it's got some blue lights on. Uh, but we're still uh, using bells. So quite a nice range of things that we can see there. It was replaced by this breakdown lorry, which is uh, Dennis 107, uh, 1964. I've read in a couple of places this was actually converted from a TL demonstrator. Never seen that uh, in terms of how that was written up or whether it's correct, but that's what I, I have seen. It's here at an incident in the Old Kent Road in uh, 1968. I have a whole series of photographs of this in incident. Um, and interestingly, that is still around. So this is in preservation. Uh, this is less than a year ago at the Fire Brigade Society uh, AGM, uh, and it's uh, at uh, Leicester and used by a company uh, who are uh, running it around for uh, towing things. So, of course, when the GLC came in, a number of counties contributed um, apparatus. And of course, for the photographer, it's always nice to find the incongruous. So here, um, something which has been uh, ripped off online a number of times uh, is a picture I took in 66. So we are a year into the GLC, you'll notice the fire station no longer says Kent Fire Brigade, only Fire Brigade, but we still have the Kent Crest, Kent Fire Brigade, uh, uh, and foam tender written on there, uh, but also with the GLC station number E27. So that one hadn't got changed over. Uh, fairly simple vehicle uh, inside. Um, it did move around a bit. I, I remember it being at Bexley betimes, uh, and uh, I remember it going to uh, an RAF uh, plane crash in Footscray in the late uh, 50s. So here, a few more from in the same vein. This is uh, an ex Surrey machine running in Bexley, but under GLC colors and station number at the Bexley Mill fire in 66. And here, one which th there are a couple of these around uh, on fire engine photos, but uh, it wasn't a common machine, I don't think. This is a Meriwether Maudsley uh, X Surrey. Uh, for Surrey, it was uh, sometimes at, uh, at Surbiton. Uh, and um, here it is in 66 in um, Erith's yard on the run as a pump ladder. And that uh, a display in Croydon, uh, this is a, a Middlesex appliance. Uh, which is being used as a control unit and is badged up as a control unit, but is in fact a 1959 emergency tender, uh, which was based at Edmonton, although the fleet number on the side is still ET4. So this is in June 66. And here, uh, a 1954 Dennis F12 uh, at Paddington, uh, I think, in, I assume in the muster bay at the back, uh, and it's X Middlesex uh, Ealing pump, rather sweet looking thing. And again, it's one of these appliances with tripods here for the uh, blue beacons. 
the uh, ambers have been taken away. So as I say, you, you could get quite a range of vehicles at, at an incident. Uh, it, it, it was slightly more interesting sometimes what, what we see today. But just to give you an example, this was a, an incident at Grove Park in 74. This is a 1959 series F101. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it's got the blue beacons, it's got a uh, two-tone horn, but it's also got a, a bell amplifier, which I assume is for the handbell. If we uh, move back and look at the attendance, this is on the border of Bromley and Downham. So Bromley's pump escape and pump, Downham's pump escape. Uh, we've got a range of appliances going from 74 to 59 uh, and uh, a station here which can no longer be represented because it's, it's Downham which closed uh, a few years ago. And my uh, 50s uh, through to 60s was uh, very dominated by two appliances uh, on, on, on at the front, as it were. Uh, one, uh, this 54 AC Merriweather turning out from Stratford in 1967, and the second appliance, the pump, is also uh, a Merriweather. And on the other side, uh, a Dennis uh, 101, this from the 1959 series, uh, turning out in 1966 from Clerkenwell, which of course is no longer with us. Uh, and uh, these two, as I say, were, were very uh, much the mainstay of what I saw uh, in the early part of photographing. Things were changed, of course, in particular on the TLs because we got uh, the introduction of the Merriweather uh, TLs with enclosed cabs, this being one of the 66 intake uh, uh, at Bromley. You'll notice there's no monitor on it. There's no monitor because it was too long for the bay. My recollection is that even with the monitor off, you couldn't quite close the doors. It must have made it pretty chilly in the winter. Uh, that's looking along uh, the line up. Uh, two 106s there running as a pump ladder uh, and a pump. Uh, and uh, again, I've not gone along the line and photographed uh, the emergency pump in the background, which was one of the uh, rarer ones. So this taken uh, in 67. So let's go a little further afield, so out of London, out of the home counties. And one of the reasons that we've got such a variety of appliances and a variety of ages is there were a lot of county boroughs as well as counties. They all had uh, their own uh, buying policies for equipment. They all had their own maintenance departments. They all had their own budgets. So some of them had to stretch things a little longer uh, than others. So it made for some very interesting lineups. This is at Eastbourne in 1966, and this is an ex-London, this is a part of the GGK uh, series from 1940, so this was still on the run then and continued. I don't know what the uh, pump here is on the right, but on the left we have an F12, which is interesting because I came across this again last year in Leicester. Uh, this is in preservation uh, and uh, is, is doing uh, pretty well. Uh, so uh, it, it produced a lot of smoke, but it does actually work. So it's a 1951 Dennis F12, uh, and uh, most of it's intact in terms of what uh, was there on that day in Eastbourne. So it's possible to see quite a bit of uh, ex-wartime equipment still in use well into the 60s. Here's GXA94 at Blackpool South, the Merriweather TL. There it is in its full uh, livery. Uh, so that was around very nicely and stayed on uh, for another year or so, I'm sure. This was a really interesting brigade, County Borough of Hastings, because at St. Leonard's, uh, there were a series of uh, contiguously numbered uh, machines. This was the Pump Escape BDY 5508, 1938 Lane and Pump Escape. Now I've read again that this was supplied as a Braidwood bodied machine uh, and it was converted into this rather swirling uh, example of a limousine body, uh, but without doors you'll notice. Um, and uh, that was still in existence then. I don't know how much longer it went on for, but it was uh, quite a machine. Round the back was another Leyland uh, pump, uh, again uh, 1938, there was an entrance to the pump 
at the back, uh, as well as the two very thin doors that were for the, the front bench seat. Uh, I have no idea how these people got in in full fire kit. But that was also running. Uh, I seem to remember that was running as a pump emergency tender. On the left, you've got an EFS vehicle with a, a load of pipe uh, connectors uh, for transporting water over uh, long distances. And then perhaps the piece, piece de resistance, uh, this one, a BDY 507, the 1938 Leyland Metz turntable ladder, which was uh, garaged at the front. So again, still in use in uh, 1966. I was told, I don't know whether it's true, uh, that this was the last uh, Metz ladder out of Germany before the war. But I think I've heard that attributed to other Metz ladders, so I'm not sure how true that is. I've no idea how I knew uh, this pump escape was around. Um, I know I drove down to New Haven one day in September 65, knowing it was here and actually managing to get into New Haven. It's a 1937 Dennis Light 6, which was originally supplied to Hove Borough Council. Uh, when it went over to uh, East Sussex, uh, I moved around, I'm sure, but it was last used at Seaford. I took this in 65 and I was told it had been used fairly recently at Seaford. Uh, it was awaiting uh, so, so being sold out of uh, the uh, brigade uh, when I photographed that in September 65. That is of uh, a station in New Haven which was replaced and subsequently another station has been built in New Haven which is a combined police fire station. So things have moved on a bit there. So let's just take a little wander around some of uh, the country and see what was uh, around. Um, this, I think, is uh, one of the smartest uh, machines uh, that one would come across in this era. This was uh, a 1960 Leyland Firemaster uh, in Manchester. This is coming down London Road to turn into London Road Fire Station. Uh, London Road Fire Station, of course, turned out into Fairfield Street. Uh, of some some. Name. It wasn't, wasn't the same as London Road. But this is in 1967. Uh, they had three uh, Leyland Firemasters and one as a pump escape and three and one uh, ET as a Leyland Firemaster. I regret I have never seen this in action, so I can't show you the front of this. If you don't know, opens up and the pump delivery is through the, uh, the front of the machine. Uh, but it's a very smart machine uh, and I was very lucky I think to get that. Um, Manchester also ran uh, a number of uh, Albion uh, machines, Albion based machines as pump escapes, not all with the same uh, bodybuilder. Uh, this was HCB Angus and this is uh, a machine that's I think been pumping most of the night before quite a large fire uh, in a, a warehouse in, in 74. Back in uh, London Road, uh, this is a foam tender which uh, was converted from a Foden foam tender which had been uh, used by the NFS during the war. So here we are in 65 and something that's already about 25 years old. It was completely rebuilt by Brigade Workshop uh, in Manchester uh, and I, I, as I say I saw it on, on the run. Uh, and um, it, quite a smart machine. It previously had just been a canvas covered lorry. And then this one in the suburbs, this is Withenshaw Fire Station, taken in 1958. Uh, so on the right, we have a 1956 Bedford Miles water tender. And on the left, uh, an ex NFS Ford, uh, Foden, uh, Fordson, uh, running as a hose lane lorry. Um, I'm grateful to Bob Bonner for the details on this. Uh, he tells me he thinks the uh, hose layer was there because Withenshaw, of course, is next to the Manchester Airport, Ringway as it then was, uh, and so uh, would be cover for that. And then another elegant looking machine, this um, Dennis F28 photographed in 65 in Cheshire at Staley Bridge. Um, fitting into a fairly tight space, and I assume that's why the bells are down on the uh, bumper bar uh, rather than uh, up on, on the roof, uh, but a rather nice looking machine. 
Um, and then this Dennis F-36 in 1967 in Coventry, um, that was the period where Coventry were experimenting with uh, yellow uh, bodywork to uh, hopefully increase uh, visibility. Uh, in the background, uh, we have uh, an F-12, which later went on to be repainted in yellow uh, as well. And the machine that was ubiquitous went uh, was around a lot, but this is at Lauriston Place in Edinburgh, a 1965 Meriwether Marquis pump escape. Uh, I was thought rather a, 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 a nice looking machine. Uh, photographed in 75 at really quite an iconic uh, station. It's there, I think, still as a museum. It certainly went over to being a museum. Uh, and uh, you notice, interestingly, it has two warning systems, a single tone and two tone horns. And just along the road a bit, uh, here in Glasgow in 72, this 1969 Deutz Magaris ladder with a cage on, uh, which was uh, fairly innovative at the time. Uh, and also a 1972 Land Rover based uh, road rescue unit. Which was introduced because it had some um, uh, a fast response on some of their urban motorway areas. And I'll mention a little bit about this because it has a company connection. Although the photograph was taken in 2017, uh, it's a 1982 Delis RS 133 pump escape, as you see, uh, which was supplied to uh, East Sussex as pump escape and went to Preston uh, Circus State Fire Station. Um, the connection with the company is our own liveryman, uh, John Hall, who at the time that this was taken was president of the Fire Brigade Society. Um, he was picked up from Durham Station with this preserved machine, which is preserved near to Durham. Um, and the reason for this and the connection is uh, John joined East Sussex in uh, 1983 uh, as a young firefighter and in 1984 in October uh, this machine was first on scene at the Brighton bombing with John uh, riding in, in the back of the machine. So it was quite a nostalgic uh, episode for him to uh, be reunited uh, with this very nicely preserved machine. I'm going to only deal with uh, four slides on, on other countries because I've traveled the world and I've got a lot of things from around the world, but most of them run into uh, more the 80s onwards. So I'll, I'll, I'll combine it, I'll just confine it to a couple of things. Here in Paris, uh, this is the sort of thing you could still see in 1975, an open uh, machine running as the premier secure pump, so the first out. Uh, and uh, it was manufactured probably about 1950. You see, there's got these uh, quite long bench seats uh, in the back, uh, and uh, the literature says that it will take uh, four aside and two in the front. So you could actually have 10 people uh, riding. But when I uh, photographed this in Paris, uh, it was two riders. Uh, a limousine pump uh, of uh, the 75 era here, which probably was built around about 64, Citroen Chasset and a Lyon uh, coach builder. Uh, this is from uh, Poissy, uh, which is a riverside station, so they carry uh, these uh, life preservers here. And then my first trips to uh, the USA were in 1981. I think the interesting thing is that in the early 80s, they were still riding on the outside of the machines, these two trucks, truck three and truck two. Uh, on the right-hand side, they've actually got a guardrail across, but on this one, they haven't. And they were still losing firefighters to injury and even death as they swung these things around uh, the corners. Um, this was the first view I had of Rescue One in 1981, a very large Mack rig. There was a 1971 truck that was a similar design. I don't know whether that is the 71 one or whether it was... Uh, the same style as the 71, uh, but uh, it was uh, interesting to be able to see it. Since then, I've seen seven, several uh, iterations of Rescue One. And here, even as late as 84, this is 40th Street, uh, uh, Ladder 7, uh, turning 
uh, quite quickly, but with firefighters uh, clinging on the side, bringing back memories, I'm sure, to uh, some of you. So we might as well see a few of these actually working. Um, this is, um, you spot the irony here, the, the interest started at Fraser and Chalmers. This is Fraser and Chalmers burning down around about 1976. And I show you this for two reasons. Uh, firstly, they're not actually bad photographs of a fire. Uh, but secondly, uh, bear in mind, I'm in the middle of a factory on fire and there isn't a piece of tape in sight. Um, those were the days for photographing. Uh, and you see we're moving over to the area of yellow leggings uh, and yellow helmets, although mixing with some black helmets as well. This was Eris 109, and that was, uh, I think, Greenwich's TL. Now here we are down by the river. Uh, this is uh, Wapping. You notice the Wapping police station here to orientate you. And notice these two uh, older style uh, launches. This is Firebrace arriving at what always seemed to me a, a, an almost weekly event at this period, this is 1973, of a 20 pump fire uh, in a warehouse down by uh, the river. Uh, these things would burn down regularly, be replaced by the blocks we now know, or some of them, I think St John's here, was uh, rebuilt uh, uh, as housing uh, and uh, it is still in existence. On the other side of the river, you get uh, a view in Wapping High Street. Uh, so fair view of ladders, so two aerials, uh, a pitched uh, escape ladder here, an uh, escape ladder against uh, the wall. I don't know which uh, control this is, whether it's pan 4E or pan 6E. The closer of the turntable ladders is TAN 149, which is a 1960 uh, AC Merriweather X West Hand that had come into the brigade at uh, the uh, combining. Uh, and so we see it there and we'll see it again at the end. This is 1973. Other view of a uh, fire in Wood showing uh, an aerial ladder. And I think uh, one of the best pictures I'd got of uh, an escape ladder in use in 1977. Again, we're looking at yellow helmets now and uh, yellow leggings. Uh, fire in Churchill Gardens in uh, Pimlico, uh, 1966, which I took for the uh, stage two board, but in fact also becomes interesting when you look at it, because that's WMX 114 in the background, a 1951 uh, Dennis F12 from Middlesex, um, listed as being at Finchley Training Centre. I'm sure it was, I think it was also at Finchley on the run. And then on the right hand side, of course, we've got Proto BA in use. Um, a scene in central London. Uh, this is 1974 in St. Martin's Lane. This is probably Lambeth's ladder. It was certainly listed against Lambeth, and we have a uh, TL in the background, so that would presumably be Soho's. Uh, we've got, um, that is Pan 60 in the background, the uh, um, unit, the control unit. And here we've got uh, BA uh, people uh, standing by ready to go. Um, I, the reason I show some of these is because some of you are going to know some of these people, so uh, do let me have names if you can. I've done a lot of pictures from the 70s, which I've scanned in recently. This lad over here appears in quite a lot in the early 70s, and he always looks tremendously happy and pleased. Very good. Um, back at uh, Kent, and uh, still now in GLC at times, October 65, this is one of the um, Leyland Comets, of course. Uh, this is a 1952 um, ex Bexley. I never saw it at Bexley, but it was at one time at Bexley. And we see this with uh, tripod lights for the blues uh, and with um, the amber lights here. As far as I remember, they never had um, two tone horns at all. And again, it is a year later, 66 in the next year, um, another of these comets fire on board a ship. Uh, there it is. It is, and they were moving these things around. This is 1952 Leyland Comet Chemex, uh, ex Bromley, but running at uh, that period out of uh, Erith. And again, Proto BA in use at the incident. And here a bit of cross border work. Uh, we're at GLC Times, uh, but here is um, 
the Erith machine at a fire in Cross Street in Erith. Uh, was quite common to get cross-border working or cross from Dartford into Erith when, of course, they were Kent, uh, less common uh, later on, but that is Dartford's K2. You saw it earlier on, on Erith's ground. Uh, and also that's a 1959 Hillman uh, BACV, uh, probably from Lewisham. And here a serious fire in 78 behind St Pancras, um, showing the 1977 uh, control unit. This was a appalling fire, there was a loss, a uh, fireman from um, Barbican was killed in a wall collapse. This photo shows uh, the, um, also the Salvation Army uh, kitchen, plus uh, the uh, control unit with its aerials up and its identifying beacon. Caught up with that again, uh, circa 1980, uh, more uh, BA in use now uh, with uh, compressed air breathing apparatus. We've got um, Southwark's pump escape here, CFE um, Shelburton Drury one. And again, I show you because uh, some of these people might well be uh, familiar to you uh, and we can put some names to faces. Control unit is still around. This is Feb 20, 2019 at the Emergency Services Museum in Sheffield. Um, it's uh, not actually mobile on that day. It had to be pulled into position, but it's quite nicely preserved. And of course, I have to show you Massey Shaw. Uh, this is the only pair of pictures I've got of Massey Shaw at an incident, 266 uh, Greenwich. And it is actually doing something, it's pumping water, thank goodness. But that's the only one I've got of it in, in service and doing something. Let me just finish with the emergency pumps from uh, 1977, uh, just to show you some of the changes. I've got quite a long series of pictures on, on these. This is at the beginning of the industrial action. As they came out of their Midlands depot, uh, they're all four by fours. There were none of the uh, two by fours uh, in, the, in this at all. They got a station number and a letter A. B, C, D, obviously 1A is out at an incident. And now you can see a line of them. They have a hand bell, they have amber warning lights and nothing else. As we go on, they start to get a stripe, blue beacon, and they were fitted also with two-tone horns. Uh, this is uh, an army group. Uh, they have actually stenciled in green jackets on the side. And on this one uh, in uh, Southwark, uh, they've uh, stenciled in that it's a, a Royal Navy team who are uh, actually uh, in charge of it. So let me just mention the Owen Rowland collection because it has implications for company. Um, Owen worked in Imperial College Laboratories uh, and he met Dio Clisby as he then was uh, before he went on uh, to become ACO. Uh, and they had a shared interest in Haschem, which was uh, very much developed by uh, D.O. Clisby. Um, he was a civilian photographer who was, it says, I put down he rode in divisions A, B and C during the 70s. But he was allowed to ride uh, and one or two of you uh, are, uh, then you don't know really how he managed to do it, but he did ride and took action shots as it were. The photographic collection was given to our former uh, archivist, Liverman Martin Lloyd Elliott, and it was passed to me as custodian uh, for the company. There's several hundred images, all of which now, photos and negatives, have been uh, digitized to uh, publication standards so they could all be used in publications. So let me show you a couple of them only. Uh, this is a fire in Wentworth Street in C Division. I've got a lot of photographs of 50 wheeled escapes in use uh, and a variety of other ladders as well. This was 1971. This is a little later, August 76, um, um, A21's ground. Uh, I think literally they have a, arrived uh, at, at this. They are the only ones there. There's the two pump in front, the ETs on the right hand side, and they're just putting the um, escape in position subsequent. Uh, pictures at this incident show members of the public actually being inveigled to hold on to the ladder, which is at an awkward angle on the pavement. 
And then I've got a lot of pictures like this. So proto VA and firefighters waiting to go in or having assembled afterwards. This is on B23's ground. You can see the Oxo Tower in the background, 1972. And again, some of you might know a face here uh, and, and let me know. You might remember this. Uh, this was a 1974 publication by the LFB, uh, just facts and figures of uh, what the brigade does and did. Um, well, the picture was actually one that Owen Rowland took, and this is one that I've got. And the ladder is TAN 149, which you uh, saw earlier in uh, Wapping High Street. This is at Farringdon Road. It's, it's come from Shoreditch, and it's 1974. And there is TAN 149 in the yard at Shoreditch, showing you its full livery in 1968. So I hope you don't feel shortchanged. I've missed an awful lot out, but I thought that this formed a, a coherent uh, group of, of pictures. Of course, there's the books, the postcards, the press photographs, and an awful lot of other things which uh, need to be dealt with. Uh, when we can ever meet again, you are welcome to uh, come to the house and look. Um, there are some company projects to deal with as well. We're working on new visits, uh, our association with uh, Dowgate Fire Station, and also I'm trying to get together some uh, in-service pictures. Just to give you uh, an idea, uh, some of you have been uh, very kind, have given me pictures from uh, your service days, uh, and I know it's difficult for some because taking pictures were not necessarily very common, uh, but here, to start you off is one provided by uh, Mick Rollings. Uh, so there is Mick passing out from uh, Southwark uh, in about 68. Uh, and there is the team. And the instructor is uh, Jerry Clarkson, our founder, founder master. So a nice uh, association here uh, with the company uh, and uh, one which if you've got things that you could add to this, please do. I've got some already and uh, it's very gratefully received. They are going into our archive. So thank you very much. I'm a very easy person to contact. If you have comments afterwards, uh, uh, do feel free to email them and uh, do feel free to email me uh, pictures uh, that we could put into the archive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, subject and you put a lot of time and effort into that, I can see. Uh, has anybody got any um, questions they'd like to uh, put to David? Yeah, David, um, you showed the picture right at the beginning of um, Erith where your father worked and a subsequent fire. I mean, later on, and I'm trying to work out when it was, but it was in the early 80s. You think it was 80s, right. I've, I've got it I written down. To, yeah. I went to a very large fire there um, at about midday, um, and it was a warehouse that had been used for the storage of waste paper. Right. And I think it was on the same site because it was turned into an industrial estate. Yeah. yeah. And I ended up there um the following morning as well doing right. a shift from about one o'clock through or five o'clock as a senior officer okay i have to say there were several fires on that ground so yeah. i've got it in my well because they're time stamped sometimes the slides uh i've got a, a rough year you know roughly so yeah. i think it's mid 70s or 70 75 76 it was at night and uh, it didn't start till night i know that um uh, because I'm on, I was on that ground, so I know, I know when it started. So there, there were several, um, and it ties in with the appliance from Erith, uh, the date. Uh, so I, I, I think it was 83 or 83 I went there, I, I, you know, onto the fire because it uh, affected, um, you know, a large area of London because okay. it had a cement asbestos roof. Right. And yeah. uh, that was the time when people were saying, oh, you've got to close all your windows because the asbestos was airborne. Yeah. And uh, it was quite something. So yeah. it got me out of uh, an HMI inspectorate visit <laughs> right. yeah. uh, because I spent yeah. most of the uh, 48 hours over in London on that job, one way or the other. I, I bet you had to look it up on a map as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a clue where it was. <laughs> Not a clue. 
but to know very interesting the whole okay. um, lot and as you say you know i recognized um some people and there's a couple more people in that um photograph with jerry clarkson as the instructor right um, okay who uh one of them at the back only died this time last year right just okay. before covid came in but, uh, yeah i know interesting <clears throat> okay that's great thank you very much has anybody else got any uh questions they'd like to put to david yeah david I can, uh, I can reminisce across a few of those, the, particularly the K1s, though, I mean, they were still around when I first joined. And the reason that the ladder was sloping on the K2 is if you were the man that took the ladder off the gantry, which came down at the back, you were known as Charles Atlas. Yeah. And um, you would need to be, wouldn't you? Well, there were quite a few actually that had dislocated shoulders when the ladder came off too fast and wasn't sort of contracted. But the K2, which I rode when I joined, was a disaster, frankly. Um, in other words, describe it. And I served at Overy Street, Dartford. And the reason the TL got moved is because when London took over the old A division, they kept using it on PDO. <laughs> so they shipped it to Thameside, which was Gravesend. And they gave us that, that pump you saw at the station at Dennis D was what they called the supernumerary pump. And it arrived there because they had a job at um, Price Wright Warehouse at Swanley uh, in the early 70s while they were all congregating on their daily Dartford Heath fire. And it ended up as a 25-pump fire and Swanley were off the run and Elton and Sidcup and a lot of other machines were there from London with no Kent attendance. So they put two nucleus firefighters at Swanley to keep it on the run. But when they had enough crew, they used to come across to Dartford and we used to man this thing as well which was quite an, an interesting innovation but at night time you could crew it with two so if the ladder had gone out on a job you would turn up a fire with you and a driver which was quite an interesting concept sometimes yeah. you can only run around a machine a certain amount of times before somebody <laughs> asks you to do something and the story about the um the steamer at medway when i was on the red watch there as a firefighter it was definitely there at 20 past two in the morning because we tipped right. out for a job but we had the Devon and Dorsets, who used to live at the back of Medway Fire Station, were being moved to Colchester. And you know what it was like then? They had a night on Medway Fire Station before they, they left. Um, and they went out home about midnight. 20 past two, I was, I was the, the watch man that night. I opened the curtains at half six before the red phone rang to say it was working. And I happened to notice that it wasn't there anymore. And at 20 past five, when they came past with a Bedford 12-ton uh, truck, they put the ramps down, took the chocks off it, wheeled it up and took it to Colchester. Um, we did get it back eventually, but uh, yeah. you can imagine knocking on a sub's bedroom door and saying, excuse me, sub, somebody's nicked the steamer. Mm. And, um, yeah. All the things that were going to be done to you were, were listed out in about one minute. Um, so, yeah, some very, very interesting um, photos there, David. Bring back a lot of memories. Thought you'd like them. <laughs> a lot of memories. The transit, by the way, the, the transit at Medway, for all your information, was a very sad occasion because it used to go into Gillingham when their machine was off the run because nothing else would fit in there. But it had no behaving it. And for those who remember the death of Neil McCulloch in 73 on the Red Watch, it was at uh, a school fire in Marlborough Road, Gillingham, in a, in a, a okay. science laboratory. And he was unlucky. We did him BA with Fred Jackson. And the light getting melted on his BA tubes, on his oxygen proto tubes. But there was nobody to get him out because Gillingham was a second pump and then no BA on it. Okay. Um, so consequently, I had to wait for Medway HPP to arrive. And by then, for poor Neil, it was all over. And that thing from that day onwards, I have to say, never had a future at Medway Fire Station for many reasons. Hey, David. Yes. Can I ask uh, a question? Of course. Um, amongst my father's memorabilia was this Merriweather catalogue, which is dated 1896. Right. And the custodians for all Merri Merriweather stuff are now Mansfield uh, Museum. Right. Now, I'm, I want, there's a number of things I want to hand over to somebody. This is one of them, but I've also got a collection of photographs 
from the early days, about 1948 onwards, when Buck's Fire uh, Brigade became born from the NFS. Oh, yeah. and my father was the uh, one of the principal officers that started that off. So I've got a load of stuff I want to give to somebody because if I don't pass them off to a, a suitable owner, I think they'll end up junked when, yeah. when I hit the buffers. Yeah. That, that does tend to happen. I happily see my wife's online, but it's a photograph, not a real face. So when I say, oh, give it to me, I, we can't see her cringe and scream as I'm taking your stuff into the house. But I mean, at the very least, what I can do is I can copy it. And then if you want to give it to a museum related to Buckinghamshire, that's fine. But I, I quite like to see the uh, photographs and, and the book. And as I say, I'll, I'll make a record of it that we can keep with the archive uh, associated with somebody uh, in the company. As an alternative, when they reopen the LFB, the London Fire Brigade mm -hmm. Museum, may they wish to keep stuff like this? Well, they might. I'd be a bit sort of sceptical about giving, giving them something. You might find it in the Mary Ellis Library soon, you know, um, <laughs> and, and okay. being flogged off. And I, I, I don't quite like the access to some of this. So um, I'm quite happy to copy it. And you know, we have a book collection associated with the company. I mean, it could go into that. But we have yet to decide what to do with the only Roman collection of photographs. Because okay. I've scanned them. They've got to go somewhere. I'm not going to keep them forever. Um, I can see. Sure, my wife is grimacing at the back. She certainly doesn't want them forever. So uh, I, I'll, I'll take things and copy, and then we can certainly make uh, a decision as to where they might go, as to who might make a good home. Yeah. Okay. The, I mean, this this has got, got appliances in it. Yeah. With yeah. a price list, yeah. and I was in Cuba in um, uh, on one occasion. I went to a fire brigade museum there, and and they had a, an old fire unit. In there, and I actually found it in this catalogue, right. and it was worth about 200 quid. Yeah. It was just amazing. Well, I, I can tell you, um, I can see one person from the Fire Brigade Society online. Um, it would make the catalogue itself would make an article uh, with a few pictures copied in as well for okay. fire cover. So, um, you know, it would be very nice to see that when, if ever, we're allowed to meet again. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll make sure. I'll, I'll collect it from you, don't worry. Yeah. I'll make sure I bring it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'll give it to Steve. Yeah. David? Yes. Can you hear me, David? Is that Alan? I see behind you, you've got a, a, a fine um, cigarette card collection on the wall behind you. Yes. Is uh, there uh, some, some nice models you have yeah, on, yeah. on the counter yeah. behind? Well, well, well spotted. There's a 60s Seagrave tin steer um, ladder. Um, there's a quite an interesting um, cartoon-like picture. If I move my head like that, it's, it's sort of a sage-type picture. It, it was a oh, yes. commemorating a firefighter who, it's somewhere like 1894-1896, got an award for um, a bravery. And so it pictures the Horstrom Fire Appliance and a little bit about him, and there's something about the chief officer. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's quite a nice one. So it's part of the, the ephemera I've got. So yes, there are a few few models around. Um, but you know, the, the bits I haven't covered are very much related to um, books. Postcards are very interesting. I, I've got a, a set of 12 on the opening of Lambeth Fire Station. So I've, I've got a complete set of those, which are all scanned in. So again, you know, we can share those. Uh, and we have to think at some point how we're going to share the Owen Rowland uh, pictures, uh, because uh, we will put those probably on Flickr. We're concerned about getting them ripped off at the moment, because if I'm not careful, stuff will just end up everywhere. Some of you may have seen some of those pictures already, because you know they get out. And unfortunately, they're not always the, the best quality versions of it. And, and so you know it, it gets all over the place. So um, I don't mind people using them sometimes. Uh, John Nadal, I see on, he used some for the London Fire Brigade book. Before we'd met, if we'd met, I'd have given him the full scans. But, um, you know, others have uh, used it for all sorts of purposes. And these really are, are now company property for the Owen Rowland, and I think we should keep it as that. 
So I have to decide how they're going to be available to people, whether we have a link off that's only available to members rather than uh, just any Flickr account. I must just say, because I see John Meekins is still on. John Meekins is from the Kent Fire Museum and has been terribly, terribly helpful uh, identifying which coach builder was associated with which appliance in Kent. They seem to change their coach builders or spread their coach builders like mad all over the place. So unless you've got a fleet list, it's almost impossible to know who made what. But he's been terribly, terribly helpful. Uh, David, just a, a quick question. Um... As an outsider, looking at those appliances that were sort of pre-war and just post-war, mm. was that indicative of the reluctance to spend money on the fire service at that time? I think, I think there was a shortage of money. Um, it was interesting that the uh, wartime TLs were going through from, say, 40 to 62 before we started getting, in London, the enclosed uh, cabin TLs. Um, I think they worked. I mean, if Bruce might like to, to comment, I don't know, but I mean, they were working ladders um, and they were replaced when um, we got manufacturers coming along able to provide fleets of new ladders. Uh, but certainly if you look at things like the Blackpool and Eastbourne, which were county boroughs, I think there was a, quite a, sh a shortage and apparatus tended to get stretched well over 20 years. I mean, it's impossible now when you think about it. You've got managed fleets that are leased and, you know, nobody, well, no firefighter wants to turn up at an incident with a, a machine that's longer than about 10 years old. You know, they moan it because, of course, you can see from the plate uh, what age it is. And they, they really get a bit fussed when I go to county brigades. And they say, I don't want to turn up in a, a 10 plate or something like that. Um, but then, of course, you were turning up in stuff much older. Um, but you know, it did reflect um, different ways of uh, servicing equipment. You had dedicated service departments. People, people did things on it. You know, they repaired them. Whereas now, you know, it's replace a unit, replace the machine. Uh, so it's a, it really was different. And it enabled me in that period of 50 and 60 to see a, a very big range of, of, of equipment. And if I'd had my camera with me every day, uh, and I'd actually had enough money because it's quite costly. Um, sounds nothing, but it was a shilling a shot for a colour photograph. Uh, and at a time when you, you know, you're a student, you didn't have any money. Uh, you buy the machine and then buy the film. And also, because you didn't see the photographs for months afterwards, you know, because 36 on a roll or something like that. I really envied Owen Rowland, who uh, was popping off uh, stuff like mad. I don't know how he. Uh, did it, whether he got it out of Imperial College or something like that, but he was taking photograph after photograph of incidents. Um, he had some problems in that he was using FP4 as a film, which is 125 ASA, and most of the stuff you're taking at fires are always dusk or evening, the interesting stuff, and so he's shooting at full aperture, so depth of field is often not very good or he's on a slow shutter speed and I have the same problem exactly. Uh, it's only now with uh, a good quality digital that I can artificially make the a, a ISO uh, higher and start shooting in poured light at 500 of a second. You know, so it's changed completely and I couldn't care less whether I take 50 pictures at an incident because I've already made the capital investment. So uh, things have changed a lot. And I, I remember talking to Bruce about uh, seeing pictures of fires and him saying to me that uh, taking a picture at a fire, if you were a serving firefighter, it was pretty much a disciplinary offence. You just didn't do it. Whereas now on the LFB website, of course, they got rid of photographers, so we don't have any decent photographs anymore. But you actually have a photograph within 15 minutes of an incident starting, which is quite incredible. Um, it's... Uh, quite a service, I must say, especially for the enthusiasts. Right, thank you, David. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to... Uh, I'm sure they want to get back to their... I'm sure account. they do, but I better ask. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very nice to see you, John. So you are looking well, that you're recovering. So I'm very pleased.
This is Francis the Master, just to thank David for a yeah. very enjoyable yeah. evening. And wow, what pictures and how interesting to hear the history in such a succinct fashion. Thank you so much for a very enjoyable evening. And, yeah. um, thank you, David. I can't thank anybody and all, all the contributors enough because, you know, as somebody who is only a political firefighter, the real thing is a very different experience. Thank you so much, David. Really good. Thank you.